While the cancellation of the Australian Grand Prix in the early races of the 2020 season is bad for Formula 1 as a whole, there'll be some teams who are happier with the situation than others. We'd like to hear your comments about what we have to say in this video and who you think the winners and losers of this are. But Mark Hughes, let's start off with a, with a winner. Who's your first pick for the gain from this delay? My first pick would be Ferrari. But put it in a context, it's bad news for everyone. Everybody's losing out on this. Everybody wants to go racing. Everybody's losing income from this. Um, but relative to the other teams, I would say the big winner is probably Ferrari because it had a very, very difficult uh, Barcelona test. There are clearly limitations with its car as it came to Melbourne. Um, it wasn't as bad as it looked in the headline times. In fact, in the long runs, it looked not not that bad, but still not not a not a Mercedes challenger. They now know roughly where they're at. They've got time to develop it. So there's got to be more lap time to be found from a car with a, a a problem that can be traced and rectified than there can be from one that's working very well already. So that's our first winner, Scott. We're putting you in charge of the losers. Who's your first pick for loser for that's that? A damning indictment of me <laughs> and my position on, um, in this team. Uh, I would I would say one of the one of the big losers has got to be Racing Point because we, we were looking at them as potentially being kings of the midfield. They de definitely look very good. Um, they left definitely good in pre-season with their uh, whatever you want to call it, pink Mercedes. That's uh, it's becoming a bit old now, isn't it? Quite quite quickly. Uh, they so they were in good health and they wanted they wanted to go. They wanted to go racing. They they were among the among the teams that wanted to pursue the the possibility at least as long as possible of, of the weekend going ahead in Melbourne. Uh, they they want to start the year. They all every team obviously wants to start start the year strongly. But they looked like they were genuinely genuinely in a position to hit the ground running. And in that midfield fight, when you've got twenty twenty one on the horizon and that uh, that ability to shift resources, you know if you can go into that season really really good momentum run of form pick up the points early on especially when you've got a driver like Checo Perez in, in, in one of the cars um, just a points machine I, I really think Racing Point would have looked at that as an opportunity to, to, to win big early on and then you know the compound gains isn't it over the season because you can just you, you can just be more efficient with, with you, the way you go about using your resources and your upgrades and switching to 21 so I think of the midfielders I reckon Racing Point's right up there for people who will it'll be smart in more than others so Ferrari, our first winner. Racing Point, our first loser. Mark, another winner. Probably Renault. Uh, Renault looked as though it had made a big um, improvement with its car relative to last year's, but it wasn't. Um, they, they were having trouble getting it consistently quick at Barcelona. So I think there's a reasonably good car in there, but it looked as though they were um, operating in a bit of a narrow window. Um, so that gives them a bit more time to you know, hit the ground running with the full potential of the car. Okay, Scott, your second loser. Can I go with Haas on this one? As another team in the in in that midfield fight, we we didn't. Re it's a slightly different one to Racing Point because we didn't see that potential from testing. You think twelve months ago, where Haas looked well, the last couple of years, Haas looked really good in pre-season, and we know how much the Haas loves to go around the streets at Albert Park. Mark has said uh, before, something in that car is it just really well suited to Melbourne. Um, we didn't see ultimate potential from pre-season that made you think, oh, wow, they're going to go there and be the dark horse and get a big result. But because they've had their problems of last year and they've been working really hard to rectify that, com combined with the fact that they're, they're traditionally strong in, in Australia, I reckon they'd have seen this as an opportunity to, to get points on the board early on. And when you're in a position that they're in with the owner, Gene Haas, sort of weighing up exactly whether it's worth to continue in to spend the amount of money he's spending on Formula One, a nice big result early on, especially after the season they've had, would have done wonders. And uh, as Mark said at the very beginning of this video, everyone's losing out financially from, from these races not taking place. So Haas, for, for, for a couple of reasons, I think, yeah, probably stand on the side of uh, it hurting a little bit more that, that the race hasn't gone ahead and, and the other races are, uh, aren't going ahead either. So our second winner is Runo and our second loser is Haas. Mark, would you like to pick a third winner? Probably Alfa Romeo. And it may be significant, it may be just be co coincidence, but the winners so far, the relative winners, Ferrari, Renault, Alfa, they're the three teams that were absolutely adamant they didn't want to race once uh, McLaren had, had withdrawn. Um, that might be unconnected, it might be unfair to, to make that point, I don't know. But uh, Alfa looked as if it was struggling in testing. Uh, it wasn't particularly quick. It, did, it looked less competitive than it looked um, for most of last year. So it gives them time to get their heads around what the problem might be. I know it's it, 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 Frederick Vasseur, the team principal, still feels the team's a little bit unbalanced in where 
where its uh, expertise and its um, it, its resource is. Um, so maybe that's just meaning it's taken a little bit of time to extract the best from their car. Scott, your third loser. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put the Red Bull teams in in together for this one. So Red Bull and, and Alpha Tauri, as similar to what uh, Mark was saying there about the positions that the teams occupied in. In, in Australia and, and, and Red Bull and Alpha Tower in the racing point camp of, of wanting to go racing, we there was this uh, aura of confidence around Red Bull in pre-season, even though they they neither set the timing screens alight on one lap pace and in the long run analysis as well, I think they looked like they might be a little bit behind Mercedes, but they were really keen to to, to go into, into 2020 at the start of the year, looked really, really confident. Honda seems quite happy with its progress. So I think from that point of view, I think Red Bull will see this as a missed opportunity to get into the season ahead of Ferrari, even if they weren't necessarily ahead of Mercedes. But, you know, establish yourself really early on, second place team, get some momentum and put together the title bid. Now they've got to wait. I would just say on the flip side of that, there, there might be a slight upside from a Honda engine perspective because bottom line is even though Honda have made progress I think it would probably be realistic to say they start the year a little bit behind Mercedes and Ferrari because they have been playing catch up for a while now even though the gains are uh, the gains are, are getting smaller and the gaps getting smaller so it would stand to reason that when everyone switches to their spec 2 engines Honda's got a little bit more to find so then that gap gets a little bit smaller again and but if we're talking about a Baku season start or starting the season at the end of May, start of June, that's going to be spec two engine territory, especially when teams aren't wasting time going around flying to races. So if everyone does start the year with what would have been spec two engines, I think Honda make a, a small gain there. So just these are small differences, but the, the battle that we were expecting 2020 to start with, it's all about marginal gains. So Alfa Romeo a winner, the two Red Bull teams a loser now. Pre-season favourite was Mercedes. Neither of you have gone for Mercedes. Mark, why Why is that? It's a bit mixed. Um, on the one hand, uh, probably we're going to go in with clearly the fastest car, so already in very good shape, already very well sorted. Um, so they've lost that, and the others have had a chance to develop closer to them. Um, that's the, that's why you would put them in the, um, the losers category. But on the other hand, perhaps got reliability concerns. Um, which may only be manifest when you're running on the track. Um, so, yeah, d d difficult to know. Difficult to know if that's been nailed, and the, it could be until June before we find out. I would just add on the subject of Mercedes, their customer team, Williams, hopefully they end up being a winner if they benefit from a, a bit more robustness on the Mercedes engine reliability side. But I think they're a loser as well because obviously Nicholas Latifi now needs to wait for his Grand Prix debut. He'd have been geared up for that. George Russell was well up for it. And from a financial point of view as, as well, Williams, they, they get most of their money from, from prize money. Anything that detracts from that is a, is, is a net negative for the team and they're more vulnerable to that than, uh, than their opposition. Well, we haven't mentioned McLaren in this evaluation of the winners and losers because of their unique situation with a coronavirus diagnosis among their ranks. So all our sympathies to the team and the action they've had to take on that. But that's our, our winners and losers. Do let us know what you think in the comments below and do like and subscribe the video and head to therace.com for all the latest on the world of Formula One and the rest of motorsport. And of course, don't forget the hyphen. <laughs>